Time for a magic trick. You know that saying is, where there's smoke, there's fire? The correlate to that is, where there's fire, there's smoke. Our house got a new nose. Notice, smoke alert 44. And it got some new fingers. About five years ago, I did a video on air quality sensors. Technology's improved quite a bit since then, so time for an update. Back then, I used an Arduino. Now, I switched to a Raspberry Pi, which is that black box right there, Raspberry Pi Zero. About the same cost, uses about the same power, but a lot more powerful programming environment. Uh, this display is optional. It is a... 240 by 240 TFT LCD display from Adafruit. It communicates with the house and displays the house time, some indoor and outdoor temperatures from the house. Um, this is the local CPU load um, temperature and uptime. These middle numbers here are the particle sensing data. And the bottom graph shows how the smoke has progressed over the last 40 minutes. Push this button, I get the graph for the last four hours. If I push this button, I get the graph for the last four days. Uh, sandwiched between that display and the Raspberry Pi is the sensor. And you can see if you look down here, you'll see where there's a fan that sucks the air in to a dark chamber where there's an LED and a light sensor, and then it expels the air through that port there. The sweet thing about this setup is there's just one cable that connects that air sensor to a quick port on the LCD display which plugs right into the Pi so there's hardly any wiring. The other piece to this puzzle is this generic Bluetooth adapter here and that's what talks to the switch bots. It's a handy way to automate things that don't have other ways of smart house control. We can also control this via voice. Hey Google, turn the stove fan on. So that sends the Turning stove fan on. Home Assistant and Node Red back to the Raspberry Pi Zero, then controls it via the Bluetooth again. So that's uh, our new nose and our new fingers. Uh, let's wrap it up. I'll go back to the computer here and we'll do a quick review of the code. So we'll start with a quick review of the Python script I wrote. It has a bunch of includes here for libraries from Adafruit and elsewhere to deal with the sensor and displays. It defines a subroutine for loading data so that if the Pi Zero restarts, we won't lose the chart data. Here's where we set up MQTT to talk to Home Assistant. For example, what it does if it gets an incoming data from Home Assistant that tells it to turn the stove on or off. We simply shell out to a system command that does a command line control of the switch bot. Here's where we set up the air sensor. Here's where we set up the display. CPU data like temperature and load. Uh, this is where we read the air sensor data and parse out the various measurements. Collect data for the graphs. For the 40 minute graphs we do it every 10 minutes, 60 minutes for the 4 hour graphs and I'm sorry 60 seconds and every 24 minutes for the uh, four day graph. Here's where we look at the buttons to decide what to display, how we plot the data, so different colors, a four hour chart versus a four day chart. The plot routine is the simple, uh, simply goes over the structure and draws lines according to how big the value is. For the main routine, we set up all these things and we do this loop, and this loop goes through and collects the data, sends the data, displays the data, and then sleeps for a second. I'll quickly show you. The how I control the Raspberry Pi. This Windows shell is pretty slick because you can set up commands to quickly SSH to things. You can see how we start Python script. We actually store the Python script on a NAS server so we can uh, back it up and edit it easier. The first thing we do is mount that directory and then we call Python to point to that script from that directory and save the log. And we can, if we're looking to debug things, uh, look at the log in real time. You can see you know, every second we get new data. 
And on the Home Assistant side, we control things with Node Red. This is where the MQTT data comes in. We uh, do the JSON swizzle, and then we do several things. One is we send it to a watchdog, and if we go 50 minutes between getting data, uh, the watchdog will get all upset and it'll reboot the Pi via this reboot command over here. This is where we collect some of the data and send it to our node red dashboard. This sends it to InfluxDB, which allows us then to plot it out with Graphena. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Here's where we detect that we've got too much smoke and we want to turn the fan on. If it gets above 100 particles and it's we have some hysteresis built in if we haven't controlled the fan in two minutes then we'll send out the alert that we're turning it on and we'll send the command to turn it on and here's how we turn it off we also can manually control things on and off from here and here's where we have the voice command coming in from home assistant via a input boolean the graphene charts is a more detailed view for the last two days you can tell when we're cooking at, uh, in the evening. Uh, interesting thing to note here is when the furnace fan goes on, like here at 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., you can see the air quality get better as the fan filters out through the air through its furnace filter. Last night, the fan was on pretty much the whole night, so you can see the air quality stays low, fewer particle counts. So I also have those graphs showing up on those fire tablets I was showing you last month. So we can easily track, uh, keep an eye on the air quality with them. Um, and I've added a, ordered a CO2 sensor also from Adafruit, so we'll add that to the mix. Uh, other than that, well, we need another five years and see how air sensors have changed and redo things then. Um, that'll be it for this month. Thanks for watching. We'll uh, see you next month.